الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمدك اللهم حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه ندعو الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يلهمنا العزم والعزيمة والصبر والثبات على أن نحمده على تلك النعمة اللهم آمين. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يحيي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت وهو على كل شيء قدير شهادة قامت بها السماوات والأرض. ندعو الله سبحانه وتعالى ألا يحرمنا إياها لحظة لقائه. اللهم امين. واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه ادى الامانه وبلغ الرساله ونصح الامه وكشف الامه وتركنا على المحجه البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها الا هالك اللهم اجزه عنا خير ما تجزي به مرسلا ونبيا. اللهم شفعوا فينا شفاعة لا نعذب بعدها ابدا، اللهم اسقنا من حوضه شربة لا نضمأ بعدها ابدا، اللهم امين. محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم طب القلوب ودواؤها وعافية الابدان وشفاؤها ونور الابصار وضياؤها، صلى عليك الله يا علم الهدى ما هبت النسائم وما ناحت على الايك الحمائم. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, our dear sons and daughters, the future of Islam, insha'Allah. We're still talking, learning, preaching, educating ourselves about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rahmatan lil'alamin. Mercy of the whole world. We learn a lot from the Quran about him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We learn a lot from the hadith, the traditions, and the seerah, his biography, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And we decided also to know what others, and I mean by others non-Muslims, <coughs> scholars, scientists, authors, activists, leaders, you name it. What they said about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the reason we took that route, not only to learn about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the Quran, the Wahid the revelation, from the seerah, the tradition, and from his biography, to learn from those other who said whatever they said about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to learn how they view Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, how they relate to him sallallahu alaihi wasallam, how they have been enlightening us about a lot of things about him sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have studied and learn from what leaders have said. One like Nabi Muhammad, Mohandas Mahatma Gandhi, La Martin in France, from Michael Hart in his wonderful book, The Hundreds, ranking of the most influential persons in the history. Sorjania Nehru, very famous Indian poets. Thomas Carlyle, a great scholar, talking about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Edward Gibson, in his history of the Saracen Empire in London, the British. From Bosworth Smith, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Annie Bissam, talking about the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
Montgomery Watt, talking about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at Mecca, and James Michener, talking about him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Islam, the misunderstood religion. George Bernard Shaw, the author, the British one, what he said about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam today. But we're talking about two other people. One, Stanley Lane Paul, and the other one is Karen Armstrong. What Stanley said about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in order to give us idea, for claiming that, that's what the Quran is saying, this is what the revelation is saying, this is what the sunnah of the tradition is saying, this is what his biography is saying, some people would say, we don't believe in all this. But how about others who will never be Muslims? But they studied the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Table talk of the Prophet, that's the title he put in his speech to tell us something about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Stanley Lane Paul. That's what he said. He was the most faithful protector of those he protected. Look at the testimony. Think about it. Analyze it. Understand it. The sweetest and the most agreeable in conversation. To him, the sweetest, the most agreeable in conversation. Those who saw him were suddenly filled with reverence. Those who came near him loved him. They who described him would say, I have never seen his life either before or after. He was of great moral and behavior and teaching. But when he spoke, it was with emphasis and deliberation, and no one could forget what he said. No one would forget what he said. Allah Yadi is talking as if he was one of the companions of Prophet Muhammad Lived with him, saw him, experienced him, learned from him, had a wonderful teaching from him. And I would say, how much he read about Muhammad He never seen him. Just reading about him. Just understanding who he was and who is Muhammad Especially when it comes to this, in here when he, when he says, no one could forget what he said. Isn't it exactly what the Sahaba, when they learn the Quran from him, they never forget it? They memorize it? They understood it? They comprehend it? They applied it? And I'm wondering, Stanley and Paul was living with him? He doesn't believe in Islam. How come he would say such a thing? <coughs> Wonderful statement about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's a great testimony. It's a wonderful thing. So you people in the West or East or here or somewhere, if you do not believe what Quran is saying about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you do not believe in what his Sunnah tradition is teaching us about him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you do not believe in his biography sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, read what all of those authors and leaders and famous people and scientists said about him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in order to convince yourself that's him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who does not, who never deserve that humiliation of those cartoons and pictures and 
depicted with him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These are people from the Western Hemisphere. Not from East. Not from the Muslim land. Not from the Middle East. From Europe and Asia as well. That is telling him that what he said about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and if we're trying to convince a non-Muslim to adhere and to learn from what non-Muslims are saying, but how about us Muslims too? Did we study his life enough? His biography enough? What the Quran said about him enough? What his tradition said about him enough? If you're not convinced enough to learn from all of the above, you may learn from those people. And we say, ah, and Muslims are saying such and such about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi How about me, Muslims? How I can defend him? How I can believe in him? How I can adhere by his teaching? How can I do such and such on his behalf Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam today after today after 1400 years? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Karen Armstrong. Let me tell you something about her first. I have a quotation from her publication, by the way, this book. Karen Armstrong, best-selling author of History of God, Holy War, the Crusades, and their impact in today's world. For anyone who would like to look at it or read it or find out what she's saying about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who is she? Karen Armstrong has established herself as a religion scholar to be reckoned with. Many people are saying a lot of things about her. She authored many books, by the way, about Islam and Muslims. And in particular, about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Her wonderful book, Muhammad. He is the author of The History of God, 1993. The Battle for God, 2000. Islam, A Short History. Muhammad, A Prophet. And she used to be a Catholic nun, but she left Catholicism and devoted her life to find out about religions in general and Islam and Muslim world in particular. Karen Armstrong. Karen Armstrong. What did she say? In one of her quotations, one of her books, when she said, that Muhammad was not an aberrant failure. He was a dazzling success, politically as well as spiritually. Politically as well as spiritually. Yeah, for those who would claim that Muhammad was just a prophet and messenger, receive revelation from God and teach it to whoever who would adhere by Islam, his followers, and companions, and so on and so forth. But when she studied his life, and Islam saying that he was politically as well as spiritually deserving success, a leader, especially when it comes to that area of politics, establishing the best state ever in the history of mankind in Medina under his leadership, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she continued saying that now it is Islam, speaking about Islam. And Islam went from strength to strength to strength. How did she see Islam this way? And a lot of people may be viewing Islam today. Islam is, get, is going from Strength 
to witnesses, to the worst witnesses ever, because of what we have been seeing. No one No. Islam exactly as Karen Armstrong is saying. Going from strength to strength to strength. But maybe we do not see it. We do not realize it. We look, also, we look only at those negative things around us in the Muslim world or done by some Muslims who do not adhere by Islam. But Karen Armstrong realized what Islam is all about and what's happening. Same book I shared with you, Holy War, the Crusades, and their impact on today's world. I choose for you one of her quotations in this book. I studied the whole one. This, this one would be one of the most fascinating statements and quotations she said about Muhammad I choose this one for you. Muhammad has given an eloquent example of Islamic principle of the sanctity of the individual conscious when he conquered Mecca without bloodshed and put no pressure on Meccans to convert. Was she there in Mecca with Muhammad at the eighth year after Hijrah? When he وسلم, along with ten of thousands of the followers adhering by Islam with him to conquer Mecca, she was with him to tell us this, or she studied history of Islam really well, analyzed it really well, and she knew what Muhammad وسلم, did while he was preparing for the conquest of Mecca, at the boundaries of Mecca and inside Mecca itself. As Karen Armstrong. Do we do as she did as Muslims? We study that event as she did? Did we understand it the way she did? I I'm afraid. I'm afraid not. I'm afraid not. When she's saying and admitting that conquered Mecca without bloodshed and put no pressure on the Meccans to convert. No bloodshed. Look at what is going on nowadays. Bloodshed is, 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 is everywhere. For reasons or without reasons. Justification or no justification. Just killing. Torture. Bloodshed. But for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Mecca, in Fatih Mecca, at the eighth year of the Hijrah, no bloodshed. No pressure on the Meccans people to come or to convert to Islam. She continues saying that the Quran taught that the people of the book were to be respected and within the Islamic empire, Jews and Christians were allowed full religious Liberty. Did we hear it? Full religious liberty for Jewish people and Christian people. As the teaching of Islam and the teaching of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As where Zoroastrians, Buddhists, and Hindus. The same. Liberty of religion. لا إكراه في الدين. إسلام محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم could not, cannot, never did impose Islam on anyone to come by force to Islam. Make your choice. Make your choice. If you learn it, know it, adhere by it, you're convinced 100 percent, you can embrace Islam. If not, لكم دينكم واليدين. You have your own religion. And we do have our own religion. 
She continued saying that the policy was not only the result of religious ideology. It also made sound political sense. And, and, and I would love to stop at that issue in here. What he did, sallallahu alayhi wa made a lot of political sense. I would invite all political scientists from all over the world, whatever they study, whatever they learn, whatever they are teaching, whatever they are educating, from whatever universities or colleges or any institute teaching and learning political science, to compare what they have learned and studied and taught to what Muhammad وسلم, did politically in Mecca in Arabia. And tell us the result. Tell us the result. It's almost the same statement by Michael Hart when he said, I choose him to be the first among those hundreds of the most influential people in the history of mankind, not only because he was a prophet, or not only because he was a messenger, because he was politically sound. He had the expertise to make the balance between secular part of it, the state part of it, and the teaching of Islam there. Same thing, the same meaning Karen Armstrong is referring to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I'm not only inviting those who are studying or learning or teaching political science, but I would invite all politicians, all politicians from all over the world, tell us what they have done for humanity, for mankind, for their own people, for their nation, for their country, for their community, compare what they have done to what Muhammad sallallahu has done. Compare it. This is a challenge, I think. Tell us, any of their leaders, here, there, anywhere, those who died, those who are still alive, those who would come to be political leaders of any nation or any country. Tell us what you're planning to do comparing what Muhammad sallallahu did. It's a challenge. Tell us. Let's learn from you. If you have anything to teach us, if not, learn from him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Learn from him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Educate your own people. In any political system you're establishing in any of your nations or countries or community, go study what he did sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The relationship among people. <clears throat> Let me go back to Mecca and what Karen Armstrong said about Mecca. About the conquest of Mecca, about no bloodshed, about not forcing anyone to adhere and to enter Islam and embrace Islam. What happened there at that battle that made Karen Armstrong to be very proud of what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? I will share it. لازلنا في رحال المصطفى الجر لا يبلى والذنب لا ينسى والديان لا يموت كل ابن آدم خطاء وخير الخطائين التوابون والتائم من الذنب كمن لا ذنب له ادعوا الله وانتم مقرون بالإجابة الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى الحمد لله واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واصلي واسلم على رسول الله صلاه وتسليما الذي قال بالحبيب المصطفى النبي المجتبى صلوات ربي وسلام عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وتابعه وتابعي تابعي الى يوم الدين my dear respected brothers and sisters of islam our sons and daughters the future of islam ان شاء الله Why Karen Armstrong referring to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in the conquest of Mecca this way saying that conquering Mecca without bloodshed, not forcing anyone there or anyone anywhere to embrace Islam, you name it, Jewish people, Jewish people, 
Christian, Zoroastrian, Buddhist, uh, Hindus. When he was in Allah, 13 years in Mecca, and 8 years in Medina, 21 years, receiving the revelation, teaching himself, teaching his companions around him, almost three-fourths of the Qur'an already revealed, now it is time to conquer Mecca. Where the sacred house is, where the Kaaba is, where many Muslims there would love to join Islam, but they couldn't come. They couldn't migrate with him وسلم, from Mecca to al Madinah. While thousands of people in Arabia would love to embrace Islam, but they do not know. It is the time for him وسلم, to go and regain Mecca. But no bloodshed. Nothing. With an army, 10,000, he is the leader, his Conquer Mecca and say, I'm here. He didn't ask for a fight. He didn't ask for anyone. Come, we are very well equipped, good in number, outnumber you. We can kill all of you, or if no killing, we can capture all of you, take all of you as prisoners of war. We can confiscate all what you have. We can take back what you have confiscated from us, money and wealth and houses, you name it. But for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we're here for Islam. What made the leader of Quraysh people at that time, Abu Sufyan, coming out to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he knew, when he saw by his own eyes, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the leader, army with him, conquering Mecca, a statement by Abu Sufyan. The leader who fought Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for 21 years, days and night, never relaxed, mainly to get rid of him, to kill him, and get, get rid of all of the followers of him, sallallahu alayhi wa and eradicate Islam, demolish Islam, destroy Islam, as Abu Sufyan and the other leaders around him. Addressing him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Akhun Kareem, wa binu Akhun Kareem, madha anta fa'il bina al-yawma ya Muhammad? Allah Akbar. You're a noble, brother to us. And you are a noble son of a noble father. But now he's addressing Muhammad sallallahu and that situation. What are you planning to do with us today? In the back of his mind, is it a revenge? Are you seeking revenge? Are you fighting us today? Are you killing all of us? Are you torturing all of us? Is it a retaliation for what we have done for you during those 21 years? Are you capturing us prisoners of war? Are you recapturing all of what we own? Can you imagine in a situation like this? You have a full power, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa no one can fight him sallallahu alayhi wa along with his followers. No one can even argue with him. No one can even utter a word against him. Bad word against him. Except what Abu Sufyan said. Mada anta bina? What are you planning to do with us from here? One word Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. One word. Idhabu. You go. You have my amnesty to you. You're free. No one would harm you. No one would cause any bad things to you. Till the point, one of the leaders of the Muslims at that time, declaring that, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard it from him when he said that 
اليوم يوم الملحمة. Telling his followers, soldiers, under his leadership, today is the day of revenge. Today is the day of retaliation. Today is the day of bloodshedding. Today it is our time in order to teach them a lesson for what they have done against us during those 21 years. One of the leaders, under the leadership of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Can you imagine that scene there, and Muhammad is there, and the Quraysh people are there, and Abu Sufyan is looking and waiting to see what would happen? When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard that statement from that leader, under his leadership telling him that, al yawm yawm Today is the day of mercy, not the day of retaliation and killing and torturing and bloodshedding. Al yawm yawm al marhamah. That's why when we read, wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alamin, we haven't sent you to the whole world except as a mercy to mankind. Easily for him to capture all of them. Easily for him to have much in him. Easily for him to kill all of them. Easily for him to persecute them. Easily for him to take all of them as prisoners of war. He never did. al marhama. Today is the day of mercy. Today is the day of mercy. That's him, sallallahu alayhi wa And he gave the order, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for that leader to step down. You're no longer one of my leaders here because of what you said. Pray. Pray. That's Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's his manner. That's his behavior. That's the teaching he got from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach all of us. And he never stopped at that point. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, No, today is the day of mercy. وَمَنْ ذَهَبَ إِلَىٰ بَيْتِ أَبِي سُفْيَانِ فَهُوَ آمِنٌ If you guys would like to seek protection and safety in the house of Abu Sufyan, you're safe and secure, go with him. If you choose not and you go to your own house, you're safe and secure. If you go anywhere, you're safe and secure. I'm giving all of you, all of these for all of you. Yet, they are kafar. They are non-believers. They put him وسلم, for so many years. Now you go free, now you safe, now you secure. Yes, yes. That's why when Karen Armstrong referring to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this way and telling us about that wonderful story of him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam conquering Mecca with that manner, with that behavior, no retaliation, no blood shedding, no Nothing to be done, no harm to you know of them, but they are safe and secure. This is Islam. Wallahi, the more I read of her books, the more I'm convinced that yani how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided some people like her to say that. Why Muslims? Some, and I'm not saying all of them, Muslims, and they claim that they are leaders of the Muslim world. They are leaders of the Arab world. They are leaders of such and such. Claiming that they are the best ever while they are killing us. Muslim fellows like them, every way. Stop shy away from what you're doing as a Muslim to your Muslim fellows and Muslim brothers and Muslim sisters and Muslim children. Wallahi, today before I came, I received a phone call and a text message from a very, very dear friend of mine here in the Twin Cities, saying that the nephew of my wife got arrested three weeks ago. He's 20 years old in Egypt. And the police and the security forces, subhanAllah, had demolished the house, hurt his father severely, bloody, and his mother and his three brothers, younger than him. And we do not know where he is now. Make dua for him. That's his message to me. And I'm not talking about one, I'm not talking about hundred, I'm not talking about thousand, I'm not talking about millions under the oppression and suppression of those so-called leaders of Muslims and Islam. 
to go study Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his life. If you're claiming that he is your prophet and he's your messenger, if you're claiming that you're a Muslim leader, if you're claiming that you're a president or a king or amir or kafir or whatever, Muslims, can they learn from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Mecca what he did? And claiming that our world, 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 we're fighting, you know, terrorists. Islam is against terrorists, no doubt about it. But I will invite them to us, and we'll fight with you against them. Al Irhabin, Taahu Dosi Al Irhabin. Who are who are who are they? Who are they? They did something wrong. Bring them to the judicial system. Bring them to the court. Bring them to the judges. Like that fellow, twenty-two year old. Three weeks and they did not, no charge has pressed against him. They would love, though they hired three attorneys for him, to find out first where he is, they did not find out. What the charges has been pressed against him? Nothing. Muslims. But then Muslims are defending us. And defending Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If they don't believe in Quran, okay. If they don't believe in his Sunnah, okay. If they don't believe in his uh, biography and his Sira, okay. Tabreen Armstrong. Or read any one of them to know more about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you don't believe in any of those revelations. We may ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give the best image of Islam and Muslims ever and enable us to study his life the best way and follow his teaching and apply. That's why we took a one hour selfies in here. Not all the Muslim organizations in Minnesota, but the majority of them, I would say. The majority of them, about 20 to 100 million people, decided to have a conference this coming Sunday in order to defend Habibuka, Wanabiyuka, Warasuluka, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in that conference in convention center this coming Sunday there from 3 to 8. Scholar to teach us who's Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The least we can do online to attend that conference. It's free with charge by the way. No tickets. It's free. Pick up one of these, share it with whomever you would like to look at the organizations back there and be there to honor Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to defend Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to adhere by his teaching Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to teach people around you who is Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to teach yourself how to learn the least, the least you can say may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala remove all of them the best insha'Allah Rabbil Alameen Allahumma Ameen Allahumma Ameen هذا نبيك وحبيبك وشفيعك ومجتباك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم Love him as you love yourself Love him as you love Allah Teach him the love he has for us Especially for our kids And teach him to love Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم And follow his teaching of Allah In their life إن شاء الله وبلعني إن الله وملائكة يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين أمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا رب العالمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين وأعد بفضلك رايته الحق والدين انصرنا على عدوك وعدونا يا رب العالمين اللهم انصر من نصر أمة محمد واجعلنا منه واخذل من خذل أمة محمد ولا تجعلنا منه اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا واجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر اللهم ول أمورنا خيرنا اللهم ول أمورنا خيرنا اللهم ول أمورنا خيرنا اللهم لا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا وفك أسرانا وفك أسرانا وفك أسرانا يا رب العالمين يا رب العالمين اللهم برحمتك عمنا وفنا شر ما أهمنا وعلى الإيمان الكامل والكتاب والسنة توفنا وأنت راضٍ 
عنا اغفر اللهم لنا ولاخواننا في الله تعالى احياء واموات ولكل المسلمين اجمعين الى هذا حدنا لا يقف عليه وهذا ضعفنا ظاهر بين يديه فعاملنا بالاحسان اذ الفضل منك واليه واختم لنا بخاتم السعادة اجمعين عباد الله ان الله يامركم بثلاث وانهاكم عن ثلاث ان الله يامركم بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وان عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يرزقكم واشكروه يزيدكم قوموا الى صلاتكم يا رحمه الله واستودعكم الله اكبر الله اكبر